uh, we're going to talk about why developers fail on alternative app stores. Um, message uh, from Catapult. I'm, I'm butchering your name now. I'm always struggled with that particular first name. My my bad. All right, can you hear oh, me now? That's better. Yes, yeah. we can hear you now. Yeah, it's, cool, it's, cool. it's Machi. Yeah. Machi. It's, uh, okay, good. So I wasn't too far off, not as far as off, off as I hoped. Still butchered it. But anyway, so great stuff. Um, lo lovely to have you here. And uh, please tell us all about why developers fail on alternative app stores and how to succeed. Thank you. So let me share my screen real quickly. And thank you uh, uh, for having me here. And I would like to talk about uh, basically the topic of today is why developers fail on alternative app stores and what we need to do to success. Uh, before start, it's just self-introduction. I am uh, currently VP of the Aptoid and Catapult. I used to be head of um, partnership at Samsung Galaxy Store, uh, Samsung Shell. And um, first, it's actually the major question is we should ask ourselves, why should I work with all the alternative stores? And well, the answer is it's, it's really hard for, for the developers right now to get more exposure on the Google Play. There's almost 3.5 million applications and there's almost 800,000 uh, publisher there. So if we are, let's imagine you are a small developer, indie developer and trying to publish a game without a budget, the chances are that you are going to get the visibility is almost none. So it, you, you need to start thinking how I can get more audience to, to, see, to see my apps, see my games, my application. So what we usually uh, recommend the uh, developers is that, yes, you still need to work in with Google Play and iOS um, if you are talking about a wide and broad audience. But if you want to target a bit more specific audience, niche market, you know, this is the place you want to work. Xiaomi, Oppo, Vivo, Huawei, Aptoid, you know, uh, Softonic, uh, uh, Cafe Bazaar, and so many other stores that are out there. And if you actually combine all the stores together, and the total uh, traffic you can get, it's in hundreds of millions of users. So a lot of developers actually trying to, uh, to think about how should I uh, work with the alternative stores, but they have the limitation, they stop. And this is the major reason why, because, because of the extra traffic. And just to give some uh, numbers, just for Aptoid, the, the store that we are, we are um, working at, only Supercell, two games, has over 100 million downloads. So, you know, of course, this is a huge uh, developer. This is the top uh, downloaded games, but he has that potential. And it's it's every 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 quarter has a couple million downloads uh, extra on top of whatever else they they getting. And this is just up to it. Imagine that you are publishing your game on 20 alternative stores all together. It can it can be a pretty much of um, additional percentage to to your entire uh, portfolio of new users. So uh, those those are three major reasons. Number one, it's it's actually much easier to get the features on those stores. Just ask them. It's as easy as you know going to the to the stores, going to let's say uh, Xiaomi uh, team and say, guys, I have a new game or I have a major update or we are playing to do some special event. Could you give us some feature? Yeah, we can give you icon. We can give you banner. If you have a banner, throw to throw to this. It's easy. All you have to do is develop that uh, uh, relationship with them and just just ask because they need content. And without content, those uh, those stores are not able to grow. Um, two years back, those alternative stores almost had zero traffic, but now it's starting to really climb up. And if you're doing it well, you can expect about twenty five percent additional revenue uh, to your title within two years. That's that's the long-term uh, strategic thinking. If I spend more time on those app stores, put in my games or application, what to expect? Five to 25. And the more time you spend, the, the higher the, uh, the percentage that you can get. Lastly, hundreds of millions of, down, uh, of, of the new users. Imagine just Huawei that it's not currently cooperating with uh, Google. All the hundreds of millions of Huawei users are not able to uh, uh, using Google Play. So to, to access their data, you need to start working with the Huawei or the publisher that can help you publish the game on the Huawei platform. So that's just an, a, a few major reasons why you should work with the alternative stores. 
But then the major challenges, developers always uh, thinking like, oh, it's so much work. But what's, what are the real challenges for the, for the developers? And basically it's, the, it's too much work. Like every time I talk to the developer, this part, it's already devastating. I have to go to every single store and open an account with them. I need to go with every store, sign a contract. I have to involve my legal team, billing team, uh, accounting team, uh, uh, operation team, just for every single store. On top of that, once we got this stuff running, we have that account there, you know, I need to integrate SDK, uh, the billing SDK for every store. And that's a lot of work. Well, after this, you still need to upload. And whenever you have uh, updates to your APK, or you want to do some events, your business development team or your marketing team or operation team need to communicate with the source uh, over and over again. Hey guys, we have a new update. Could you please uh, uh, publish it on time? You know, as you can see, that's a lot of work and this doesn't guarantee any results yet. So right now, right here, a lot of developers already dropping. They, they feel like uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. And I could talk about more uh, challenges that uh, developers facing, for example, attribution, for example, like a, a paid user acquisition, but unfortunately there's not much time for that. So I would just go talk about those are the biggest challenges. It's usually technical side and uh, uh, you know, communication side. So, uh, so how to actually become successful in those alternative source? How to uh, manage that? Well, think about what if you only have a Google Play and what if you only have iOS? How would you success there? You will create a, comp a business plan for them for the next year, two years, three years. You will have a roadmap for your product, for your marketing team, for your operation team. And then you will prepare a presentation and give it to Google Play that uh, you prepare to invest that much money. Could you give the features on time? You have uh, updates of this and this. So why don't you do it with the uh, third party stores? Just repeat it. Just think about those the stores are right now very successful, making you a big uh, potential uh, outcome. Just repeat it. And then within next couple months, you will start to see the fruit of your labor. So let's talk first about the integration because this is a major show, a showstopper to, to most of the developers and it doesn't have to be. There are many solutions for, um, uh, for the developer to choose. You know. I, of course, I'm from Catapult, so I will, I will talk about Catapult more, but you know, there are also other companies that offer similar services that we do. First is the Flexion, and Flexion is actually our partner because they also publish uh, the Flexion games on the Aptoid store, which belongs to Catapult. So Flexion works like a publisher. You basically send them APK and they help you publish your game on all the alternative store, or at least major stores. So. Well, there is a revenue share, but of course they do most of the work for you. Then you have a catapult, which is us. And we have a proprietary technology that automate entire process. Basically, all we need to do is you give us Google Play link, or you send us APK and the automatic integration, automatic submission uh, will happen uh, whenever you give us the link. And if you have an update on Google Play, it will automatically update to all the major stores. That's how cool it is. But because we also offer in co-publishing services, our business marketing team will communicate with the stores and say, okay, this, this games have a new update. Can we do some feature? Can we hear some uh, marketing uh, material? And there is the UDP, Unity Devil Distribution Portal. And it's more like self-distribution. They help you do all the technical stuff into one SDK, but everything else, like for example, uh, account setting, uh, marketing, uh, communication with the source, billing, you have to still have to do by yourself. Those are your choices. So if you are a developer thinking about the third party source, you know, you can choose somebody to do it for you, get the flexibility, or you do everything by yourself. Um, but those are your choices. So it doesn't have to be showstopper for technical part. So what's next? Well, your attitude. I think that's that's the most important, you know, thing uh, when we're talking about the alternative stores. A lot of people don't have a good attitude to them. They, and why? Because they the expectations are too high. And I'm, unfortunately, there's no magic way. And imagine, imagine you publish a game on Google Play and you put zero effort there. You just put it there, you know, and no marketing costs, no user acquisition, 
you don't even tell the Google Play the game uh, game is there. Do you expect the game will success? And that's a straight straight on question. And of course, no. Uh, most likely, you're not going to get any users. You know, you might get few organic, but it's not going to go anywhere. So why do would you think that alternative stores are the same? They're not going to do work for you. You still have to um, maintain and build a relationship. So what are you doing right now with the Google Play? You maintain the relationship with them. You tell them. You're working with them on the long-term planning to attract the users, to, to create a, a promotion, to ask them for some features. And then you're doing the user acquisition, media buy, influencer, search optimization, video optimization, iOS, icon optimization, title optimization, so on and so forth. And you know. You know in your heart that if you don't do these efforts, you're not going to success. But what you should be doing with the alternative stores is that you should actually maintain the relationship with them. They might not be good, big right now. For example, let's say Xiaomi or Oppo. They're not that big yet, but they could be. You know, they have uh, they're like number four, number fifth largest brand, OEM brand in the world. They could be big. If you're not maintaining relationship right now later it might be too late later they might be just uh, sorry guys we don't have time for you you know it's it's just how the business work so you need to sit down and talk with your team and say okay we need to ex uh, prepare establish long-term expectation what we can expect can we achieve let's say 15 percent of the increase of revenue from those stores if you imagine that if you put the application now and tomorrow you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars you will you will be disappointed but if you focusing on this uh long-term planning, you actually can uh, achieve really, really big uh, and good results. And um, inquire stores if they actually have a, a pay user acquisitions because a lot of stores actually they offer to. And you are getting the traffic, you're buying the traffic directly from the source. You know, there's no middleman. For example, Facebook is a middleman often, you know, uh, you don't have to pay it. You're getting directly from the OEM uh, phone. That means the prices could be quite low, you know, if you target the users correctly. And, you know, this is the main difference, I think, here. In Google Play, you know, without effort, you want success. But in alternative stores, you, you kind of expect to success uh, without much effort. But actually, it doesn't work that way. So those are like the major uh, differences that you will you expect. Now, how how to improve it, you know, and this is how the catapult work. And this is actually, I would recommend for most of the developers to, to do the same way, you know, create a special promotion for the stores. Like, let's say you put the game on the Aptoid and let's say, oh, we, we prepare the welcome package for the users, just for Aptoid users. And because of that, because you make something like this, Aptoid, for instance, will be very happy to and willing to actually find influencers to promote it give you features and often they pay for it and often they even can pay for the uh, promotion expenses i've been in samsung before before we were offering like uh discounts or like uh, rebates you know it wasn't a developer who paid for it it was samsung who paid for it whenever we did like ten thousand us dollars giveaways or like uh, uh, free phones it was always the stores uh, doing this but we need to have a willing content provider who are actually allow us to do this kind of events. Then work closely with the stores. Just make the most important part, even if you don't have the time to talk to them, you know, update your app on time. Just, you know, if you send into Google Play like uh, on Monday and then uh, two weeks later, you send the update to the stores, you know, often the user will switch to Google Play and the, those stores lose incentive to promote you. Don't make it happen. Don't make the stores lose incentive. You know, that's the reason we want to give them update on time uh, because it protects them from losing the users and sometimes fuel some traffic to alternative stores. Often you have on the website, for example, download on Google Play, download the iOS. What stops you from saying download on Samsung, download on Aptoid, download on Xiaomi? You know, fuel some traffic. I mean, this is the, the market could actually. Uh, become more and more uh, richer because of that. And I have uh, three minutes, so I just want to go over uh, some case studies and then we go to Q&A. So we have a few case studies like uh, with uh, IG or Smallbike. So, so basically what did we achieve? We are achieving on the alternative store or almost 100 million US round rate, you know, 
nobody would assume that, but here it is, it's the, the revenues are going up. And after joining the third party stores, the downloads increased by 250%. And th that's great. It's, uh, you know, the expectation on the title is 20 to 25% increase on revenues within 24 months. That was the expectation. And here's the, the proof, less than one minute, all those transactions that are live and da daily revenues. Another case study that I could offer to you is basically a mobile legend. So in Mobile Legend, in the first month, 250,000 DAU. How? Just, just asking all the major channels to promote, doing major event at the same time. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but this like article was seen by almost 15 million views, you know, stuff like that. It's basically going back to the original question, you know, ask them, they will help you. Find a way and they will help you hundreds of influencers all also was created uh, within the first few months to promote the title, you know? So this is something that those stores are willing to do over and over again. Then we have a much older uh, game like uh, Clash of Kings, which is more like classic. They don't really promote much on the Google Play anymore, or uh, mainly organically because the game is like very, very old, but it still managed to increase the uh, revenue by 10% within the eight months of the promotion. And actually those uh, third party stores triple the number of, of users that you are, uh, that the, the developer is getting compared to uh, uh, Google Play. Because again, uh, the developer is not buying traffic anymore. So, so it's organic. So compared to organic users with featuring CPI ads and global influencers, they actually managed to, uh, to triple their uh, monthly installs. And the proof of concept developer say, okay, we want to give you all the games. Uh, so that's the biggest uh, success case that, uh, that uh, any source can have. And lastly, I have uh, one minute left, smaller games, just to give you idea that it's not only big games that can, can go big. In, in terms of the uh, Z-Day, um, it's ahead of by, by uh, four months of the schedule. So it started really low. And that's actually, that should be your expectation. When you start it, it's not gonna be like super quick right away. But over time, the revenue grows. And for Legacy of Discord, again from Yuzu, 15% growth in revenue within the first year. So again, mainly the expectation and the reality and co communicating with the source will be the key for, for you um, uh, to success. Thank you. Peter, thank you so much. Oh. Sorry, Matt, what I've done. Looking at, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be looking at email when I'm listening to somebody at the same time. <laughs> but great, great talk. And I think you're, you're right. This, this is an area that I think is going to become increasingly important as well. Um, and I think, you know, the, the highway, you know, highway, highway, I can never say it right, um, example of app stores which aren't being supported by Google is a, good, is a good example of that as well. I think increasingly the way that we're now seeing Steam versus Epic Store is also another one. I think you know, as we move forward, we'll probably see more and more stores taking, you know, coming out of game companies themselves as well. So I think, I think there's lots of areas of uh, opportunity. Um, we've got a few questions here. Um, so let's, let's kick off with, um, does UA and MMP attribution work in alternative st stores? Um, yes. If you go to like, for example, apps, apps fire or adjust and you type it for like a, a turn, uh, how to, get the attribution third-party stores. If you Google it, they will have a page uh, showing you an instruction how to do it. So uh, you, you can set up the attribution there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just that because people are, you know, a lot of game developers aren't UA people. Yes. And so, you know, they've often been able to just you know, defer all that work to somebody else, uh, whether it's the publisher or whether it may be the uh, ad pl platform. Um, you know, yeah, let's say we just stick the Unity ads in or whatever the, pl hey, I used to work yes. there, so I'm going to say that by default. Um, but, you know, you, you you see how that's easy and it's done. But when you're starting to talk about, you know, getting someone to install on a third party platform, sometimes the steps to doing that are a lot bit, a lot more complicated, should we say. Um, I think particularly where, we, again, maybe the default is we end up finding ourselves using Facebook ads a lot because we can target. We can get you to go directly. We put the Facebook pixel in. Job done. We're there. Um, anyway, can you? In fact, this is actually, I think, the same 
it's kind of the same question. Can we use AdMob, Facebook and others via iForce ad mediation in other alternative stores? Is that uh, the same answer? Yeah. Not necessarily, not hundred percent the same answer. Okay. This is uh, require a little bit uh, trick. Um, yeah. Right now, Facebook uh, send uh, like you can uh, you can put an app and ask you, do you want to send to iOS or Google Play? But it doesn't have the other source, unfortunately. And I know that some <laughs> major players already negotiating Facebook to offer this uh, uh, possibility. Right yeah. now, what we can only do is basically uh, send uh, send the traffic as a website link. So instead of sending the uh, traffic as an install, send traffic as a website link. So it's a little bit different uh, way to to um, target the users. No, no, it makes sense. Uh, another question, uh, do we use different or the same bundle IDs for alternative stores? I think I'm um, hard off that, but I'd love to know what you think. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, if we are talking about the package name, uh, it yeah. should be it should be the same. It's Actually, most of the, the major stores uh, will not accept a package name that is different than Google Play because oh, a lot of those OEM stores, they still fo uh, following the Google Protect. And if they notice that, for example, package name is different, they will say something wrong with this, uh, with this game, you know? And you will need to have a special permission from the stores to actually enable. It, it also uh, comes with the signature. It's better. It's best if the developer signed the uh, signed the signed the pack, uh, package. But yeah. for sometimes you could actually use the different package name, but you will just create a bit more trouble. You have to like uh, it's like actually one two extra steps. It's possible, but it's not recommended. No, no, I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, one of the things that also occurs to me. Um, is just how important regionality is. So, so for example, you know, this mindset makes absolute sense in China, but in China, we've got to use, you know, a Chinese based partner to do that process. Yes. Um, and obviously there were some, there have been some many periods of time when that was slightly complicated, particularly with certification <laughs> and stuff like that. I think it's a little easier now, but not sure it's that much easier. Um, and I know that there was lots of um, old school and, you know, until not that long ago, where there were still regions where you know even Java games still existed of, of all of oh, yeah. all things, um, and I think in particular there are some areas, I think particularly in South America, um, where there are still you know regional app stores or even in, in some cases operator app stores or even you know other you know bespoke handset app stores. I mean, how far and wide does this go, and you know what does it mean for? I mean. Like you say, this approach you guys are talking about makes hopefully makes it all that simpler. But how, how much culturalization, how much localization should we be putting into our mindset when we're looking at this kind of alternative app store approach? Um, well, it depends. For example, one of our partner stores is Cafe Bazaar. And basically, uh, in Iran, there will be a lot of restriction. You cannot show too much body parts. You yeah. know, so icon will need to be revised. Some screenshot will not be uh, allowed. You know, some basic stuff like, for example, TikTok will be not allowed there because of the religion. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Those stuff uh, we we pay attention to, but actually, most of the store, like I would say, ninety five percent of the major stores, they closing their eye to it because they need content yeah. at this yeah. moment. Unless, unless somebody like a government uh, report that oh we we cannot we cannot have that. Uh, for for instance, recently like India uh, had a lot of uh, uh, problems with the Chinese apps, but yeah. those apps are, will still be available to some stores, not all but some. So it will really depends like uh, on the on the mindset of the stores, mindset of the developers. You know, uh, uh, same same thing actually with the, with, with China as you mentioned. Uh, we could, uh, for example, if the developer doesn't have the ISBN for China, they can still somehow run the game, but it's not going to be on the official channels. It will be on yeah. the non-official channels. Some developers do it. Uh, do I recommend it? Not necessary. I would, wouldn't recommend it, but there are still Come and bite you on the bum later, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the thing in China in particular, though, is this sheer volume of stores that you could go to. But as I remember, I think last time I looked, it was like, you know, more than 100, 140 or something stores that you could go exactly. to. Exactly. It's but more there were than only, 300, actually. You know, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there were additional ones, but they were like 100 or 
so that were they are very niche sized often. Yes, they are yeah. very niche often. Like like there's one one thing it used to be uh, Billy Billy. Uh, they used to only focus yeah. on RPG type of uh, content, and now they grow it to one of the biggest platforms in China. Uh, something yeah. with the tap tap that used to focus on um, on like uh, top West games that are now evolve in China. Now it became like the biggest platform in in uh, uh, user uh, generated content. Yeah. So they they always start with the niche. For example, Clash of Kings, uh, sorry, Clash of Clans from Supercell is successful on, actually on the very small store that focus on strategy games only. Mm-hmm. In in Tencent store, in QQ store, you will not even see in the top 100. Yeah, no, no, exactly. And I think, yeah, you know, yeah, obviously a lot of the big kind of chat platforms, the Weibo's and all this kind of stuff have their own kind of app stores and obviously Tencent and all, you know, all these bigger organizations. And we, I think when I was working in the China, this was like 2008, so a long time ago, there were, you could at least go to the sort of 10 top ones. But yes. I think that that's not the case anymore. I think it's become just like you say, there are these, and that, in fact, you, you could argue it was essentially what Google originally seemed to say when Android first started that anyone could have their own store. And this was a, this is a, a logical conclusion where stores become, you know, around the audience for the store exactly. and therefore the games can be found that you go to the store, you want to find those games. I, I think that's a good thing. But the, I think there's a consequence to it, which is that we're not going to see the same return across the board from alternative app stores as we might see on an app or, or an Android store or, or even Steam, you know, arguably. How do you, how do you help people set people's expectations so that they know over, across, by, by covering the whole range of stores, you're going to have a significant increase, but any particular store might not deliver that increase. How do you mm. set the expectation of developers on that correctly? Uh, I have to look at the at the type of the game that we are working with. And then the first question asked me, does the stores have any incentive to promote this game? If the game is yeah. like, for example, hyper casual or casual game, uh, usually the stores don't earn any uh, revenue because all the revenue coming from the advertising. So what's the incentive for the stores to promote it by, by CPI? You know, just just do your basic ROI. If it's getting cheaper ads, then you are uh, co- co- communicating with the uh, um, uh, retention, you are in, in the profit zone. But what if you have a like mid-core, hardcore or type of games that actually have, uh, you can do some revenue shares to the stores? Is there enough incentive for the source to promote it? If there is, you could expect 25% uh, increase in their revenues. Uh, or, uh, if you are talking everything except China, we're not talking about China right now, just all the global stores. If, but this is something that it's, I would say in the floor, 25% floor, two years, you know? Yeah. What happened two years later, I hope that, you know, we're not going to have a, a du- duopoly in the market. Maybe there will be another, major store that actually become very very big then the the the, the whole whole store will change you know yeah well i mean i, I still think that the you know there are so many opportunities for you know web gl based uh well whatever the next i forgot what the next one, web gpu isn't it the next one you know where this kind of technology starts to change accessibility but we still need some way of finding content so i i still think that we're going to see more stores not fewer um i believe so i think you know, so this, this approach that you guys are taking, I think, is very smart. And I think, you know, more developers that look to deal with cross-app stores are going to be incredibly important moving forward as well. But it's also really about understanding where your audience is and targeting that. And I think the smarter we can be in choosing the right channels for our game to be effective and localizing that appropriately and culturalizing that appropriately, I think that's where we're going to see the best success from this kind of approach. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That was a great talk. And uh, thank that, you, Oscar. Thank you, everybody. Pleasure.